Shall I start? Good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Puneet Kumar MK, Assistant Professor from the Department of Agastya Tantra from the Jesus Ayurveda Medical College and Hospital, Mysore. Today, I'm dealing with the topics uh, identification, dowry death, and uh, FSL, that is Forensic Science Laboratory. Among them, the first, I'll start with the identification data, uh, that is identification This data is based on that each and every person has an unique and peculiar characteristics or each and every person is different from one. Based on that identification data is given importance in the forensic medicine. Then what is identification data? Identification data gives an idea that who is that person and to which family he belongs to or what is his occupation or he belongs to a male or female or transgender and who are their his parents and also where he live or the location or the locality or like state or district wise given it will give an idea and if a person is a married or not and these are the few things in this slide regarding the identification data or the clue by which we can recognize a person or uh, based on his individuality. Based on the definition, identification data is a determination of individuality of a person. It deals with the recognition of a person. It is done in leaving person or a dead by recognizing the certain features or characteristics that are unique to the person. As previously, I told each and every person has their unique identity or unique characteristics features. Based on that, we can identify the person. That is what individuality of the person can be identified based on that uh, uniqueness or the individual characteristics. And types of identification data, there are two types that is complete and incomplete identification data. Complete identification data is also called as absolute identification data. Yes, still now we know that we got to know a basic idea or we brushed up about identification definition and its type, why we need identification data and all. But what is its importance in the law or how, what are these applications in the medical legal aspects that is called medical legal importance of an identification data. When we see this identification data in a living person or a person is alive, uh, identification is very important in the cases like civil case and criminal cases. When we see that civil cases, what are that like in false personification cases like he is a false claim that he is this person or that person like without any basic uh, uh, evidences, then passport, pension, inheritance of the property, life insurance, amnesia, unconscious patient, and when some certain um, penalty has been given by the court for in a criminal acts or any, if any other acts like infanticide, rape, and etc. And when giving the consent and domestic violence, dispute of sex, missing person, and soldiers, etc. These are the civil cases or the few civil cases mentioned here. Based on that, in those cases, the identification of a person should be 
done because when we are arguing or when we want to prove that person has been done mistake or uh, or guilty to prove that the person should be identified properly because of that in cases like civil and criminal uh, identification records is very important when we see the criminal cases to identify the accused person for murder assault sexual offenses criminal abortion and exchange of babies hit and run cases etc we can claim the person any person has been done the mistake or um, committed an mistake but recognizing the person is very important maybe if from we have been saw the person from the back side or we have not saw, saw the person properly at that time identifying that person who is that person who done the mistake which is we are suffering now is very important because of that identification data is very important and in the dead person in the cases like mass disaster bomb blast air crash facts or any other issues which is done in the committee or community on a mass or in a population then identification of a person dead body is very important because there will be a number of family members persons um, who has been died in that um, disasters in that case we have to identify the person or a dead body to which he belongs to a family or uh, identifying that person for and census data or to hand over that bodies to their family members or to do the final um, what customs whatever the etc and also to know the reason behind that is very important in a dead person or in living cases identification marks is very important based on that in each and every cases at least two identification data should be noted down this is what a medical legal importance of an identification data whenever there is a question like define identification data and its medical legal aspect for five marks or the three marks um for the in general for in three marks you can write it definition types and medical legal importance this is sufficient for three marks when they ask for the five marks then you can go identification data and little bit elaboration in general like one or two lines that will be sufficient for the five marks then, see this is the examples where we have to identify the person who is that person see this is a picture where skeletonization was done has been occurred but there is no any evidence of uh, who is that person when we visualize for this visualization when we go for the um, study of that bones or study of that soil which is belong or which is surrounded to the skeletons then we will get an idea or and we'll get an evidence of that person who is that maybe in an individual home if a person has been died for a long time because of a smell or so many others we can identify that this is a person okay but when the person is buried after death in an murder case or in anything else the identification of that person is very important in this is the case where um, that is in right side corner which has been buried in the soil where we don't know the person who has been buried but uh, by the examination of the skeleton which is available there and by the examination of the so soil uh, we'll get and some evidences based on that evidence definitely we can tell who is that or we can identify that person whether the male or a female or based on the dna um analysis or dna analysis we can compare with the mm, suspect and we can identify the person next corpus delicti it is means offense or a body of crime body offense or body of crime or essence of a crime it is in facts of any criminal offenses in the case of murder or homicide death by unlawful violence in case of murder or in a case of homicides the cause may be a unlawful it is a violence of unlawful to establish that identification of a body should be done and the facts in the way or the death caused by a criminal act should be identified that is what corpus delicti here the two aspects is very important identification of a dead body and the cause or the unlawful violence or act which is behind to cause a death should be yeah. this is process this procedure is what corpus delicti next identification data 
identification that is or the clues or evidences which gives the particular identification of a person based on their peculiarity or individuality or based on their uh based on the differences from other persons based on religion race sex age stature dactylography footprints kinetoscopy tattoo marks scar deformities anthropometry dna typing and blood group these are the few data or the evidences which by which we can do an identification of a person we'll see one by one race it is a biological grouping within the human species distinguished or classified according to a genetical e transmitted differences see here in between the human we will see different varieties of the persons or each and every person has their different um individuality or peculiar or, or the changes in between their physical appearances like color hair style uh, physical appearances complexions etc that is was categorized categorized based on the groups or based on similarity some similarities they are been categorized and that is called as a race it is biological grouping within the human species distinguished or classified according to a genetically transmitted differences that changes or genetically okay because of that genetically transmitted differences has been mentioned this race is a population concept it is not under the uh, identification of individual uh, person it is a group of a person or it is a population concept based on the population or a group we can uh, differentiate race okay races of the population which different differ in the frequency of some genes there will be frequency of genes will be changed or different will be there based on that race has been changed and that some similarities in this race has been categorized for one group of or of set of people there are mainly a three races that is caucasoid uh, caucasoid mongoloid and negro and there will be a difference between um, these th these three uh, races in the features like complexion iris color forehead nasal aperture nose face extremities and skull this was these are the features where we can identify the person based on their race and differentiate to which race he is belongs to by this difference we can recognize the race of a person okay based on the complexion when we see caucasians will be fair mongoloid will be bit yellowish or negroes will be and blackish based on their iris uh, caucasians has been gray or the blue and mongoloid will be a black and negroes iris will be black when their forehead uh, in the caucasoid group or the race the uh, forehead will be raised and in the mongolian it will be an inclined and backward and in negros it will be small and compressed for it will be seen okay in nasal apertures uh, there will be narrow elongated uh, nasal aperture in the caucasian group and it will be a bit rounded not an exactly round a bit rounded the mongolian and broad in the negros when we see a person of negro person their nose or the base of the nose or the uh, nasal opening will be a very wide which is based on that we can recognize he is a negro but it is not an um a definite identification based on the one data it should be and multiple features it should be considered all these features and we should recognize the race okay and then nose in uh, caucasians it will be a sharp and in mongolian it will be flattened and in negros it will be blunt based on the face appearance uh, in caucasians it will be a small mongolian will be large and flat and it won't be an globus or a um, it be like or it will be a circular but it will be a flat but in the negroes their jaw will be projecting means jaw will be prominenting and malar bone malar bone is a zygo, zygo, zygomatic bone which will be a prominent and easily visible okay when it comes for the extremities in caucasians it will be an uh, proportion for their body will be normal the extremities that is upper limbs and the lower limbs will be uh, appropriate in proportions for their body size and in the mongolian it will be small that means extremities will be a small uh, compared to or uh, in the proportion to their body and in the negroes it will be a larger in proportion to the body that means extremities will be a very 
large means elongated or lengthwise it will be more to their body proportion then the skull uh, in the caucasians will be a rounded head called as a medium head and in the mongolian it will be square and short headed and um, in the negroes it will be a narrow and elongated that called a long headed persons based on these features we can differentiate the race and definite identification based on race can be done see here we can see the caucasian group nasal aperture will be elongated and narrow in mongolian it will be a bit circular and in negro it will be a wider part here here we can see the wider region and based on the um, arrangement of the teeth in the oral cavity that in the negroid it will be a bit square and in the uh, mongoloid it will be in oval and in the caucasoid it will be a taper this is an arrangement of a uh, teeth in the oral cavity based on these bite marks also we can differentiate the race where, uh, in any bite cases okay and then orbit um orbit the caucasoid it will be a bit a triangular to circular shape and in a negro it will be a rectangular and in Mong mongolite it will be circular based on this um few data with a pictorial or diagrammatic representation when asked for the race for the five marks this difference between what are the features previous in the slides it was there that and this uh, diagrammatic presentation will definitely helpful for scoring a complete marks in the exams okay it is easy for diagrams to write it and it is not a big thing just in orbit the shape you can write it no need to write the skull and uh, in uh, teeth arrangements also just a square and oval and a tapered uh, shape can be mentioned okay based on this it will give some presentation will be very good and it will convey that you have been read because of this diagram representation okay next these are the features where we can differentiate the race and religion there's a uh, nucleus complexion eyes ears physical features teeth and skeleton characteristics both race and religion can be differentiated okay religion mainly um, in hindu there is no circumcised and there will be or japa mala like that kinds and the caste mark may be there like uh, if hindu god if hindu god name or hindu names which is generally suitable and then there will be act of, of hair on the head for example yeah, brahmin pujari or where there will be an extra uh, tied knot on the head that is like cut off of hair on head and piercing of a male both or single uh, piercing which will helpful for the identification of the religion in the male hindu and uh, in the muslim male the person will be circumcised and there will be callosity on the forehead and in the knee
okay and then uh, hindu hindu male is over muslim male is a person circumcised will be done uh, and it's their custom and then marks of callosity on the forehead and lateral parts of the knee and the feet because of the position of an uh, position doing while well doing the namas and come for the male females of hindu uh, there will be an uh, different kind of sarees which will be different from the muslim females and vermilion is kumkum which will be present on their forehead and the silver toe ornaments means that is toe ornaments also toe ring will be present over there and tattoo marks uh, of their husband name or their children name or their mother or the family name or something else like uh, tattoo marks which um you an evidence of an hindu and nose ring and earrings earrings won't be an multiple but one or two will be usually present when we compare to the muslims female their dressing or the sari variety or the different kind of sari patterns will be there and then there will be no kumkum or vermilion and no ring will be on the septum there will be several ear rings will be present and tattoo marks won't be there and we see christian uh, there is no much difference between the christianity the presence of their cross uh, symbol cross or the uh, uh, like or the presence of the cross or the asu uh, symbol as a tattoo marks in their body uh, this or a few which can be differentiated between muslim hindu and christianity uh, and this based on this we can identify the religion next sex determination the sex is a biological term uh, denoting the genetically genetic physiological and anatomical characteristics of an individual based on that one can identify a male or a female or the trans okay based on the sex of a person we can identify the person is a male or a female or the trans but when we are seeing this um when the matters of this sex all sex are equal or uh, all the male or the female should get equal rights each and everything like this but why the sex determination should be done why the sex determination is very important in forensic department or forensic science let's see the identification should be done in the leaving of the dead okay determination of the sex of a person in the case of a doubtful sex or the concealed or possess both a sex organs okay a seal is for one particular sex for example there is a reservation for a females up to 30% 30% in any of the government services or anything else or present uh, the current government has been given a special power for the females or free in the traveling and in case rtc bus that is karnataka uh, bus because that is what one of the mm, rights of the female which has been given by the government okay like that and legitimacy divorce and paternity when the case of paternity or the issue of an uh, parents or the divorce issue that time identification of sex will be an important and criminal offenses um in the case of murder in the case of rape uh in these conditions identification of a person is very important and sportsmen in the national and international uh, identification of a male and the female should be done and based on their um sex that is male or female uh sports will be decided somewhere where lifting of weight or the example and throwing a uh, short put or the uh, discus throw the javelin their weight will be different for the male and females and based on the females and females capacity it will be uh, decided and it will be uh, given that is what because of that few of the civil rights criminal offenses in the paternity and divorce legitimacy and sports and in doubtful sex of a person and in, and it should be done identification of sex in this conditions and in the living or in a dead should be also be done uh, sex determination okay then how to determine a sex uh, this can be considered as a physical or morphological characteristics where based on the uh, appearance of a person can be differentiated into three categories that of evidences present evidence of sex probable evidence of sex or positive evidence of sex presumptive evidence of sex is a simple that is like outward appearance of a person can be helpful for the identification example their clothes their face and voice etc their dressing patterns of male and female will be different and their face will be different because of present of mustache and beards or presence of hair patterns is different and voice hoarseness or 
high pitch difference of voices will be there in the male and the female. This gives a simple evidence for the differentiation of a sex. And probable evidence of a sex, like sexual characteristics, there is a presence of uh, breast and vagina in the females and the penis in the male. Based on their sex organs, it can be um, identified the sex of a horse mm -hmm. and their hair distribution of a pattern. Beard, hair, uh, body hair, anything. Based on that, we can differentiate the uh, sex of a person. Then positive, uh, it is the most evidence of a sex, presence of ovaries in the females and uh, testes in the males. This can be given as a pharmacological, uh, morphological or physical um, identification of a sex. Okay. Next, microscopic study of a sex chromatin. Um, there are some cells or the chromat sex chromatins which is present in the male and the female. Based on that, or uh, they based on their uh, percentage or um, absence or present, we can identify the male or the female. First, we will go with the bodies. That is the sex chromatin. It will be present in the male up to zero to four percentage, and in females, twenty to eighteen percentage. You can see the image that in the uh, left. Uh, corner with where the round circular mark has been present in the both the pictures okay in that image one image both the pictures are there in that you can see that will be more in the females that is 20 to 30 percentage okay davidson boys uh, will be absent in the male and in the female it will be up to 60 percent it is a drumstick like appearance uh, to the which will be attached to the nucleus and based on this we can identify this it will be present in the female. Based on these two, we can differentiate it is a male or a female uh, body or a person. Okay. And then fluorescent test. In fluorescent test, we use a uh, reagent or um, for the reactions and it will give the uh, fluorescence appearance when we visualize on UV light. Based on that, uh, in males, it will be like 0 to 2 percent. In females, it will be a 50 to 70 percent uh fluorescent test will be positive okay in uh next one more like quinacrine hydrochloride test in that it is also like an a fluorescent test which will be treated the cells of the tissue will be treated with the quinacrine hydrochloride solution and then it is visualized and that time in the male it will be 45 to 50 percentage which will be a positive it, it gives an appearance of an Fluorescence, okay, means which will be like a or which will be a bright in appearance in when it is treated with the reagent. And 45 to 80 percent, it was there, then it is conformation of a male and female, it is 0 to 4 percent. Okay, based on this, that is uh, bare bodies, Davidson bodies, and fluorescent test and quinacrine hydrochloride reagent test. Based on this, or the microscopic visualization of this, we can differentiate a male and a female uh, person or a body. Next, other tests like hormonal assay, uh, by the testing and uh, levels of testosterone and estrogen, we can identify the sex of a person and gonadal di biopsy. Uh, the gonads should be uh, sent for the biopsy based on histopathological study. We can con give a confirmatory um, of their sex and DNA profiling, radiologic uh, radiological examination. In radiological examination, there are two categories. Price classification in that pattern of the coastal cartilage will be different. In males, um, it will be two patterns that is the square back bracket and uh, and linear type, wherein the female it will be a central tongue like appearance. And based on that appearance or the based on that structures, we can different it is the male or the female uh, structure, and then we can confirm that. A metric system based on the footprint and its ratio. The footprints and its ratio as like fingerprinting uh based on that we can differentiate the sex of a person next where it is difficult to differentiate a male or the female a yeah, concealed sex that is hide when the person is hiding their sex and the uh, appearance themselves as an other person if a male person is when wearing a female dress or by artificially uh visualizing the thing as a female uh, that is like one thing where the concealed sex will be there. In that condition, it will be difficult by a few um, based on physical appearances and decomposed or mutilated body uh, where the body is completely decomposed or body is chopped or fragmented. In that condition, determination of a sex is very difficult. At that time, you have to go for the uh, identi uh, identification of uterus and the prostate because uterus and the prostate or the last organs are, it takes 
long time for the decomposition based on that we can identify the given body is a male or female and based on their hair when we got hair, we can uh, by a trichoscopic or trichological analysis we can differentiate the person as a male or a female then skeleton when we go to the skeleton uh, as we all read in the anatomy that is and female bone comparison to male bone male bone will be a long and harder and weight like uh, and as a female bone will be light uh, which will be soft um, like that we can identify based on the skeleton and also anatomical grooves or anatomical marks which was present on the bone so that we can differentiate the sex then intersex intersex is a condition where persons will be having both the sex <clears throat> it is an intermingling of an sexual characteristics on both of the both the sexes in varying degree okay it may be a physical reproduction or sexual behavior this be like uh, physical appearance or the reproduction functions or the sexual behavior this three may be an intermingling of an sexual characteristics there are like four types that is gonadal agencies in gonadal agencies the sexual organs will never develop and uh, there will be abnormalities in early fetal life itself and then the nuclear sex will be negative in this condition okay in gonadal this genesis is an um, your external sexual uh, features that will fails to develop fails to develop external sexual features in for example turner syndromes or the clean filter syndromes can be taken as a gonadal dysgenesis where the sex organs or the sexual characters will be varied and there won't be a proper development in the body hermaphroditism here both the sex that is both ovary and testes will be there in the person uh, and again it has been classified as in true hermaphroditism and false hermaphroditism the true hermaphroditism the over testes will be there they are both uh, presence of testes and over ovary will be there and it is a rare conditions both xy or xs will be present and then in the false um, uh, hermaphroditism you have the person internally having sex and externally he will be having on opposite sex that is called male pseudo or female pseudo hermaphroditism can be consider based on this and sex determination can be done next age age of an individual can be determined by the following points based on the teeth based on the ossification of bones based on second uh, secondary sexual characters and general development in case of uh, children teeth teeth is an exos exoskeleton in the human body uh, we have an uh, pattern or uh, order of uh, teeth that is temporary teeth will first erupt then after falling permanent teeth will be uh erupting that is called diphodent and it is this procedure called diphodent in some other uh, animals there will be an uh, multiple times of falling of teeth and multiple times there will be origin of new uh, teeth that is called poly polyphodent okay in when studying of a teeth the anatomical structure of a teeth is very important uh, teeth will be having a crown neck and root okay this three parts which is made up of enamel dentin gums pulp and cementum composed of and that was and nose okay the incisor canine premolar and molar or type of teeth which will be present in the oral cavity and how to differentiate or how to determine based on this teeth how age can be determined by the nature of the teeth by the number of the teeth and by the eruption of the teeth and laboratory test this was a few this was the four characteristics features based on which we can determine the age of a person we will see one by one nature of the teeth uh, in nature of the teeth everyone we know that there are like two types sets of teeth that is temporary teeth and permanent teeth uh, that so temporary teeth is called a milk teeth or milky teeth uh, which first erupt uh, at the age of uh, 6 years uh, sorry at the age of 6 years it start to fall and it start by 6 month okay there will be a total uh, milk teeth will be 20 in number and in this set of teeth there will be no premolar teeth okay then eight incisor four canines and eight molars will be present their uh, dental formula is 212 icm that is icm incisor scan and molar the eruptions begin to develop during the sixth week of intrauterine life and mineralization begins at the 14th week and continues after birth also after birth teeth starts erupting by the age of six month and this is a few clues based on which we can tell the uh, age of a person or the baby or any of the person okay uh, in the milk teeth is an uh, temporary teeth the eruptions and the calcification will be uh, assessed based on the 
uh, duration of the month of the year when we see the lateral uh, sorry lower medial incisor will be adapted at the 6 to 8 months and calcification will be 1.5 to 2 years that is one and a half to 2 years and upper medial incisor 7 to 9 months uh, and lateral lower lateral incisor 10 to 12 months and upper lateral incisor 7 to 9 months and first molar will be at 12 to 14 months and canine will be 17 to 18 months and second molar will be 20 to 30 months this is how the eruptions of the teeth will take place in certain or respective durations okay when we uh, when you are writing the um, teeth based age identification or when they ask uh, for more than uh, three months then it is necessary to write eruption or calcification when they ask for three months it is sufficient like temporary teeth permanent teeth and other characteristic features can be write in a two or three sentence okay next is permanent teeth permanent teeth will be 32 in the number that is eight incisor four canines eight premolar and 12 molar here premolar will be present in the permanent teeth okay the dental formula will be 2123 icpm here the order uh, is the first molar will be erupt at the six to seven years medial incisor 78 years lateral incisor eight to nine years first molar nine to ten second uh, sorry first premolar nine to ten second premolar will be 10 to 11 years canines at 11 to 12 years second molar 12 to 14 and third molar 17 to 28 years uh, i have written in the ascending order of the eruption of the ears based on that you can write it if you remember the which teeth uh, first you can write in ascending order of the ears it will be easy for remembering and then based on the age uh, at which age at, or at what age then or how many numbers of the teeth will be present like two to five years of a person there will be a 20 in number of teeth at the six years 21 to 24 at the seven to four eleven it will be 24 uh, teeth and 12 to 14 years there will be a 25 to 28 and 14 to 17 years 28 teeth will be there and 17 to 25 years 29 to 32 and more than 25 definitely it will be having a 32 teeth in complete oral cavity okay uh, this chart or that is um, tabular col column can be used uh, other than action calcification writing it will be easy for remembering at which age how many number of teeth will be present when they ask for the five marks definitely this age and number of teeth will be helpful and it will be a mass gain point and then laboratory methods that is body's method here uh, age will be assist, uh, identified by the cross striations developed in the enamel of the teeth. Based on the cross striations developed in the enamel of the teeth, the age is being calculated and the stocks method based on the height and weight of the teeth. And radiological examination, appearance and fusion of an ossification centers, radiographic study, of, study and calcification of a root of a teeth can be helpful for the identification of an age of a person. Next, age of a fetus. Uh, here, developing ohm. Uh, ohm will be called 7 to 10 years after conception. It is called as a developing ohm and embryo for the first week to eighth week and fetus until birth and after birth it will be called as infant. And the gestational age can be de determined from the maturation of uh, chorionic villi and uh, uh, foot length and ossification centers. There is a rule of Hasse where the calculation will be done by the crown to heel. Um, that is measurement from the head to toe uh, or head to heel it should be done the me measurement based on that measurement calculation of an age can be done that is square root of an length and length into centimeter divided by yeah, five this is based on the condition like a first few months that is first five months and the next five months based on this we can calculate the uh, by based on this formula we can calculate the age of a fetus and based on the secondary sexual characters that is a male and the female uh, at the age of certain like 12 to 18 years there will be an hormonal variations and there will be development of the secondary sexual characters or the sex organs based on that there will be certain few changes in the body uh, which has been considered as sexual characteristics and in that 13 to 14 of male there will be a develop and starting of an uh, fine hairs of a pubic uh, on pubis, then testis will be a bit larger and the frame and penis will be enlarged. And the 15 years, there will be a moderately, moderately pubic hairs and axillary hairs. And in 16 years, well grown pubic hairs and external genitalia. And 16 to 18 years, there will be and patient hairs and voice changes will be there based on the 
second year sexual characters male can be identified and then female 12 to 13 years they will be in breast begin to develop and labia minor uh, hairs will appears and labia develops and menstruation will starts between the 12 to uh, 13 or 12 to 15 years of an age within that the menstruation will start okay 14 to 15 years there will be a well grown pubic hair and axillary as in the females and uh, ossification of the bones will be explained in the uh, forensic osteology part and medical legal importance of an age in the criminal responsibility uh, age will be matters because until the seven year of age if any person committed it will be it won't be considered as a guilt or the uh, crime because at that time they won't be having any mentality or maturity to understand what's going on and judicial punishment and if it is a person within 18 years of uh, age if he committed he will be sent for uh, judicial imprisonment and uh, by the judicial court punishment will be decided and the rape even if a person if a female is under uh with the age of 12 if 12 to 18 years within uh, 12 to 18 years if he is a wife if intercourse is done it will be considered as a rape and kidnapping uh kidnapping females uh, between the age of uh, mm, 12 to 15 or 18 years will be and like uh, uh selling the in the crime uh, like selling or rape cases in that it will be an um, considered and uh runaway cases if a fem female has been run away it will be considered as like uh, below that age within 18 years if uh, runaway cases in cases it will be considered as an um what kidnapping or if he is willing for a female also then employment that will be helpful for the child working which is a criminal criminal or offense criminal offense okay because of that age is estimated and attainment of the um, maturity measure or it is like a power for the authorities or power for the properties or for giving in evidences this can be considered as an age is one of the important and then marriage between below the 18 years or actual age of a male and female which should be considered for the marriage otherwise it will be considered as a child marriage which is an offense and criminal abortions identification of an age and importance in stability is also very important in these conditions estimation of age is important which gives an idea of an offense and forensic odontology it is a branch of dental science that deals with the application of dental knowledge in the administration of law and justice the complete oral cavity will be examined and based on the data which has been um, collected at the examination uh, time based on that data uh, it will uh, based on that data knowledge you can give a justification in any of the cases like identification of a person or what are the poisonous which is present or any materials which is present in the board in the oral cavity um like that we will get an idea of uh, idea based on which the forensic odontology will be helpful for identification or in the test of a law forensic dentistry or forensic or odontostomatology also it is considered as and the dental charting method uh, method of identification Dental charting is a method of identification, numbering, and charting of teeth. Okay, here, okay, dental charting is a method of identification, numbering the teeth. Each and every teeth is given a numbers based on that, it has been calculated and arranged. And based on that charting, it will be helpful for the identification. The methods of universal method, farmer's method, and uh, method or fda that is federation dental internationally okay this is a uh, first one is that is universal dental notation system it has been used in the america where there is a separate formula for calculating that uh or charting that that is in uh temporality they has been used alphabets that is a to t okay they have been right to left they have been continuous from right it has been started that is a b c d and uh, upper upper jaw and again it is continued to the words the left lower jaw and ended the right lower jaw the continuation will be proper the continuation should be proper while uh, doing the starting that is a b c d uh, j k then t this is a proper order and proper uh, direction of uh, charting the t in the uh, universal dental notation system and then in the permanent they have been used in numbers from right upper jaw to the left upper jaw that is 1 to 16 again left lower jaw 
to uh, right lower jaw that is 17 to 32 this is what complete a set of permanent teeth which is present based on this uh, uh, numbering or formulating the alphabets or numbers there will be a calculation uh, which gives in specific ideas of which teeth and what is the problem deformities of the teeth or any uh, evidences like presence of uh, any chemicals or the poisonous based on that we can identify uh, identify question can be done and based on that examination of the teeth or the development of the teeth or uh, radiological examination of an ossification centers and all we can estimate an age and the palmas notation they have been divided the uh, uh, into four quadrants that is upper right upper left lower right lower left and each quadrant has been started from uh same numbers that is one to eight one to eight one to eight one to eight without any uh signs that is plus or minus signs now given the number one to eight from upper right upper left uh, lower left and lower right that has been started from one to eight and then in adder up system of dental charting they have been specified with the symbols they have used plus sign for the up, upper jaw and minus sign for the lower jaw, which has been followed by a say numbering pattern as in uh, Palmer's notation. When FDI, that is International System of Dental Charting, there, this is also called as double um, digit charting uh, or, or International System of Dental Charting, where in permanent teeth, they have been used 11 to 18 series and 21 to 28. For numbering the teeth, and what is the importance of an uh, forensic odontology? It can be done the identification, estimation of an age based on the developments and determination of a race, the sex, uh, and then DNA evidences, bite mark, injury, occupation, habit, uh, time, time since death, and detection of a poison. This is a few importance of an uh, forensic odontology in which in all these conditions the identification can be done. Each estimation can be done, sex and the race can be done, and it will get even DNA evidences based on the bite marks. We can identify um, decomposition or fall of the teeth or their uh, denaturing of a teeth will give a time since death and detection of the poison when you consume the poison for orally or uh, by accidentally there will be a small stresses of the poison which will be present in the oral cavity when we consume or for example in uh, filling of a teeth mercury has been used when the dosage or the mercury is not properly formed that can act as a poison that is one of the examples of the detection of the poison um, this was a, like few forensic odontological impo odontology importance. Next is dactylography. Dactylography is a fingerprinting, um, or it is also called as Dalton system. Fingerprints are the impressions of a pattern formed by the papillary or epiderm uh, epidermal ridges of fingertips. Each and every person has from of, some of the ridges and furrows uh, in the hands. When we saw that, it will be answer, um, ridges. Okay, or this ridges based on this ridges, we can estimate the person identification because each and every person has a different patterns of fingerprints. Based on that peculiarity or the patterns formed or by the arrangement of the uh, ridges or epiderm throughout the life. And once it's developed, starts developing, or once it formed until death, it doesn't even after the death, it doesn't. Uh, change because of that this is one of the uh, important identification data in the forensic medicine and the patterns of only same for uh, 
in uh, same in that both the hands it will be and different also this is what one of one more uh, um characteristics of fingerprints both the hands will be having a bit different uh, and each one be resembles the same and this features like identification is an absolute and highly individualistic or even in a monozygotic twins also it will be and different and they are formed during the intrauterine life that is uh, second to fifth month between that and it will start uh, developing primary ridges uh, and secondary ridges and then if it is the same means one in 64000 millions in a 64 million persons uh, there may be an one or two persons which will be having the same features but other than that it is very peculiar or individual or uh, features which will be an um, doesn't see in any other persons okay it will be a stick on to the only one person that same pattern or the same peculiarity of that finger ridges won't be there in other persons also based on that uh, this, uh, patterns there will be cal uh, classification in the whole composite loop and arch when whole it will be and circular and in the loop it will be like um, u shape that is in a loop shape and arch it will be in, um half moon shape or just an arch you can consider the shape and in composite all these three will be mixed that is called a composite um, um pattern okay these are like major uh, classification but still in world it will be a different uh, classification in loop also it is different and other character uh, classification are there but this is sufficient this four uh, are important classification and then recording of the fingerprints there are two methods that is a plain method and rolled method okay when the plain method just when we are giving your fingerprints on the bond paper in the way of signature and all just we'll deep uh, press on an ink pad and just we'll put on the paper that is like bond paper a lateral way of the fingers will be rolled as in when we are giving the fingerprints in the uh, other card um, documentation when the other card documentation will give fingerprints of all the fingers of uh, by rolling both the lateral side and medial side just rotating or slight tilting towards the sides will be that is a road pattern and fingerprints at the scene of crime there will be like a three categories like a visible print plastic print and latent print visible print will be smeared with an or contaminated with an blood paint oil or grease when the hand is uh, full of oil or with the grease or any other materials when we touch other uh, wall or any other objects there will be an visible prints okay that is considered as an visible prints or the prints can be visible easily without any uv lights or without any um other objects to uh detect that marks that will be considered as an visible print and the plastic print this fingerprints which is left on soft surface like soap wax etc which can easily re taken up with other instruments like in uh, cellophane tape or that kind of things we can easily take it out that is a plastic print and latent print either it is visible or uh, invisible okay here based on the sebaceous sebaceous and sweat gland secretions this latent uh, print will be present okay the agents which are used to develop and fingerprints of aluminum dust charcoal powder or inhydrin solution these are the uh, three uh, Okay, uh, powders or the agents used for the development of the fingerprints. For example, when we touch um, or when the fingerprint without any this agent, if we touch of any wall or paper, that print will be there, but which is not be visible. When this aluminum powder, or chocolate powder, and solution is put on that, we'll get a certain pattern. Okay, that will be that's called developing of fingerprints by using these powders. Uh, it will be very helpful in. Um, reading that ridges, curl, wool, uh, or any other patterns. Then, advantage is it has chance prints at the scene of crime. Chance means by say, um, searching of one fingerprint, by chance we'll get some other fingerprints, which may be a victim or uh, maybe other person which given evidence or which suggests or which will helpful for the solving the cases or the case may turn towards any other ways okay this is called a chance print and absolute identification can be done because of uh, peculiarity in each and every person fingerprints won't be 
want to be same and it will be different in each and every person. Data can be stored and transferred in telegraphically. This is what uh, an example for like our other card where our data or everything has been stored and linked each other with the help of our uh, fingerprints. Okay, can be obtained from the decomposed bodies. Okay. Uh, even decomposed bodies also fingerprints can be obtained. The skin which has been degloved will be collected, uh, separated and dried and kept. But also you can uh, use for the studying of fingerprints analysis. Even degloved or degloved, not degloved also it will be useful until unless um, that is what hmm, dermis uh, layer is uh, dermis and epidermis is destroyed. Okay, medical legal importance, absolute method of identification, uh, identification in case of exchange of newborn babies. Because of that, when baby is born, they will take the footprints and uh, the fingerprints for the identification and they will tag the baby with the help of that. And in case of impersonation and uh, in the form of signature, uh, identity records like in Hadar card and all, identification of criminals, even the Hindu uh, imprisonments or uh, in the jails also they will take and fingerprints and uh, footprints for the uh, identification of a person or when uh, a case has been going on in the court the, to identify that person or based on the evidence what we got in the scene of crime the fingerprints what we got will match with the suspected person they also will take the fingerprints of a suspected person if it is matched it will be considered as a um, person who has been um, at, uh, conducted that crime or who has been done that crime based on that identification is also done and then <coughs> person impersonation uh that is like claiming that he other person has me like claiming he's me or uh in the false naming in the false name uh impos uh, identification is done in the false name that can be solved by using a fingerprint analysis analysis this are the few importance of medical legal importance of fingerprint or dactylography dactylography is uh, of the important topic they may ask for by mass because of that what is uh, dactylography how it is peculiarity and what are the principles behind the uh, for using dactylography as an important or fingerprints as an important evidence evidence should be mentioned in that and then what are the features uh, and classification that is the four types this is very main four types are important and then recording how they will record and the fingerprints at the scene of crime how it will be there that is three categories out there based on that you have to mention and then what are the agents used for developing the fingerprints then advantages and medical legal importance this is sufficient for uh five marks for tactilography explanation when writing uh while writing tactilography you have to mention the uh, patterns uh, okay, classification that is like wall, loop, and then arch and composite. You have to mention that. Then DNA profiling. DNA profiling is a technique involving chemically dividing DNA into fragments which form a unique pattern and then matching that identity profile with the pattern obtained by similar testing in a suspected specimens. Means the DNA it is a study of a DNA. While studying of DNA, we will get in certain patterns. That same patterns will be um, obtained from the suspected persons, and that both the patterns will be compared and will get an evidence, or we can identify that person who has a, of suspected reason murderer or is person has been done crime. Like that, we can uh, identify the person. DNA fingerprinting, DNA typing, and genetic typing. It is a form of DNA profiling. Okay, techniques of DNA typing is like uh, four techniques are there. That is RFLP, that is restriction fragment length polymerization, polymerase chain reaction, PCR, short tandem repeaters, and mito mitochondrial DNA analysis. Uh, okay, this is a diagrammatic representation of. Um, Diagrammatic hmm. representation of RFLP that is a uh, uh, the samples will be collected. Then that sample DNA is extracted. The extracted DNA is being hmm, subjected to an cleavage, uh, or it should be and divided by the help of a restriction enzymes. It will divide the DNA, and then divided DNA has been sent or to the electrophoresis 
in that electrophoresis uh, we will get a pattern of dna which has been transferred to the nylon membrane of nylon sheet in nylon sheet it will be bind to the radioactive dna probe it is called asynthetic dna uh, which gives in specific uh, patterns based on that it will be uh, the x ray films or based on the x ray films or the uh, rays which will subject for the nylon membrane gives a pattern based on that pattern we will compare and we will identify the person okay in this rflp techniques there will be a cell break breakdown that means the from the samples the dna is extracted then extracted dna is done into fragments that is the dividing of dna into fragments by enzymes then it is uh, exposed to the electrophoresis based on the movement of that we will get a pattern and then analysis is done is in simple um, what uh, presentation of an rf rflp technique For electrophoresis here, uh, agarose gel is used, a nylon member, and addition of uh, DNA probe to an, um, that is a synthetic DNA to a uh, fragmented DNA that is called as a hybridization process, process. After that process, it has been washed with a solution which removes the excess or unwanted DNA probes. After that, it is exposed to, on the X-ray film uh, to de detect the radioactive patterns. After that, we will get a patterns of uh, fingerprints based on the comparison of that patterns we will identify the person first so from sample to extract the dna extracted dna is done fragmented, fragmented dna is then um, uh, sent for the electrophoresis in that electrophoresis uh, we will get a pattern then that will be transferred for the nylon membrane in that nylon membrane there will be a hybridization procedure that hybridization procedure is adding or combining the radioactive synthetic DNA to the original DNA and then it will be washed with a solution to remove the ex excess of uh, DNA fragments uh, that is the prop DNA fragments and then it is exposed to an X-ray film by using radioactive patterns which we will obtain in the films we will compare and identification is done. This is a simple way for X-ray diagrammatic representation. By this uh, order if you have mentioned then it will be a proper order and a complete answer. Then PCR technique, PCR polymer chain reaction, that procedure everyone has known. That is like a single double strand DNA is being done into single strand DNA. In that single strand DNA, where artificially synthesized or prime DNA, on DNA, that is a known DNA has been subjected. And again, a two DNA fragments or a two double strand DNA has been formed. This double strand DNA has been subjected to um, electrophoresis in that we will visualize in a fluorescent light which gives a pattern based on the pattern uh, identification is done. Extract the DNA and denature that means double strand DNA is covered into single strand DNA then mix with the single strand prime DNA uh, that is what artificially done. Artificial DNA or synthetic DNA has been fragmented uh, or which is combined with the denature DNA. That means the data which is present in the uh, the data which we know that is called as standard prime DNA that will be combined with the denature DNA which forms against um, identical double strand DNA. That identical double strand DNA is subjected to the electrophoresis where, and it has been visualized the fluorescent light which gives a pattern and that pattern will be compared in the fluorescent light. Based on that identification is done. Next is STR technique. In STR technique, it is a DNA is isolation is done, then replicating the STR fragments by the polymerase chain reaction is done, then it has been subjected to electrophoresis, then analysis is done by the software, uh, software generated data. There will be analysis is done by using a system or the software where the data has all been already uh, stored or fed in that software based on that data's identification has been done. Here, STR, that is short tandem repeaters uh, analysis, is a technique for producing and comparing the DNA fingerprints that reflects the lens of STR okay, uh, sequences at a specific size in the genome. And in this method, that is STR method, uh, there is an something called a tandem repeaters DNA sequence or uh, present in each human genome. And at that 
str or standing repeaters it has been um what separated that separated will be again um reconstructed or resynthesized and then that resynthesized or by the help of an uh, uh, synthetic DNA or any other uh, known DNAs and then it has been uh, subjected for electrophoresis and based on the stored data or feed data by software the identification has been done it is a simple simply as in the simple way I have been explained in a short it has been uh, other procedures behind this also just remember that the DNA fragments or isolated DNA has been replicated it means replicated based on that tandem's frequency tandem um, Fragments or the tandem um, repeaters. That repeaters that is having each DNA having the tandem repeaters. Based on that repeaters, it has been fragmented. That fragmented has been uh, replicating by the use of PCR method. That is polymerase chain reaction method. Again, that will be uh, subject to the electrophoresis and then based on the software, with the help of some software, which has been already, uh, data has been feeded for that. Based on that idea, software will give a comparison between the uh, patterns and identification has been done. That is short tandem repeaters, short tandem, tandem repeaters, or uh, sequence of DNA uh, or the tandem repeaters is a DNA sequence which are present in each human genome and they show the variability of different individuals. The variable based on this variability identification is done. And then mitochondrial analysis, mitochondrial analysis or the mitochondrial DNA is a multiple in human cell. Each mitochondrial has DNA that is called a mitochondrial DNA, which is uh, present in the human cell and it is inherited from the maternal cell. That means it is transferred from the mother. Mitochondrial DNA is transferred from the mother cell. And, um, and these samples or the, this test And these samples cannot be detected by um, RFLP or STR methods or the techniques. And it is then extremely valuable in unsolved cases for many years because the based on this maternal DNA transformation from the generation to gender. This is mitochondrial DNA that is a peculiar uh, characteristic. It is a maternal DNA which is transferred from mother uh, to female and female to her child like that. Uh, because of that, it will clear the uh many cases which has been um unsolved for many years and then this in this picture the a is a nuclear dna inherited from all the ancestors here you can see that all the dna's or the nuclear dna has been transferred from the generation to the generation to all the persons but in the b mitochondrial dna is inherited from the single mother to her uh, daughter then daughter to her daughter like that because of that or the person which has been transferred from the mother the mitochondrial dna which is transformed from the mother to the next generation um, this is how the, uh, uh, it will be helpful for the identification that is mitochondrial dna the dna which is present in the mitochondria will be inherited from the mother only based on that we can easily identify and solve many cases which is not solved in for many years and the calibration uh, here the patterns are there where we can see the mother and child patterns comparison to father one father two in the uh, maternity disputes based on the patterns we can compare the blue box which has been circled as uh, father's related uh, dna uh, patterns and the red one is mother dna which has been compared and mother uh, and the child is the child's mother and the father can be identified easily and this is a victim and the same pattern of a victim and the uh, evidence which is got in the crime scene uh, the two patterns and suspected persons there are three persons where we can combine the patterns of a victim and crime scenes to suspected one suspected to suspected three that time the match will be seen in the suspected two based on these patterns we can e easily identify the uh, person who has been done the important in dna profiling and this pattern will be a unique to unique and persons uh, it will be varying. but the father and mother and the children will be sharing the pattern the child will be sharing the pattern of a mother and the father that will be helpful for the solving the maternity uh, cases and in the victim and the crime scene evidences 
okay when you compared or when it is analyzed the scene uh, crime scene or the victim and the suspected persons we will get a pattern which can be uh, compared if it is the same that person is considered as an, um, a person who has been done the murder based on that we can identify um, murderer or a person who has been done the crime or offense then application identification of a person is uh, done in the uh, sexual crimes violent crimes and accidents missing persons war fights uh, baby mix up conditions or disabled persons then identification the post mortem practice that is accident disaster decomposition mutilated remains skeleton or exhumation these conditions um, when we don't have any other data then we'll go for dna uh, profiling based on that identification can be done and in the dispute that is maternity and paternity, which has been given an example in the last, uh, last slides, and to resolve uh, the disputes of adultery, incest, etc., and uh, in migration cases to identify the sex, and in the false implicated person also, it is helpful for identification. Next, forensic osteology. It is the uh, subspeciality of forensic medicine and deals with exam examination and assessment of a human skeleton. Here, uh, how to examine the human skeleton or a bone which is available, then we have to first detect the it is a bone or not. Okay. Or uh, based on the anatomical marks, size, shape, etc., and haversian system and osteon cells, which is present in the human bones or any kind of bones. Okay, based on that, if it is a bone or not, first we should identify. Then if it is bone, then you have to identify it is a human bone the cross examination and the anatomical marks which is present on the human bones and also by the antecedent of the humans and aversion system which is different in animal and human. Then sex determination as uh, sex determination is uh, is done based on the weight, height, and uh, length of the bones and the surface that is rough or soft. Based on that, sex determination is done. Uh, age of a person based on the development of a bone or based on the ossification centers or based on the calcification. Uh, age of a person can be determined uh, determined based on this process that is uh, development of a bone, ossification centers and calcification based on that age can be determined. Uh, based on the height of a bone uh, or that is osteometric examination, osteometric board examination that is called have bone um, osteometric board. Based on that height of a bone is measured. Based on that height, we can uh, identify the person. If it is a very long bone, it belongs to male. It is a small, it belongs to female. And the parts of a bone or uh, different parts of the bone can be estimated and measured by the uh, osteometric board. And the race, uh, for example, then the bones will be a very elongated and wider in shape uh, compared to other races based on that race can be identified and personal identity that is uh, like any deformities congenital or acquired deformities is present in the person based on that also um, which has been seen in the bone this based on that also you can identify the person or uh, deformities malformations dental examination radiological examination will be helpful for the identification also and then times is the uh, cross gross examination if the bone is present with a fresh tissue okay uh, that indicates that it is in um, recently um, or the time is very duration will be very less and light or the hardness uh, the bone will be hard uh, at the time of death early death and it will takes and it will become very lighter as the duration passes okay and wear and tear of the bone um, as the day passes or the years ago, the bone slightly it will cause a damage or there will be um, uh, damage to the upper layer of the bone or there will be break breakage will become brittle and easily we can uh, break uh, the edges uh, based on that or the upper surface can be removed based on this wear and tear and light or dark uh, hardness uh, and presence of fresh tissue gross examination the physical examination of a bone can be done and stage of healing there are five stages of healing uh, fracture fracture in fracture that healing will start or healing will be having a five stages based on that stages or uh, also we can estimate the age of a person or we can identification of a person can be done physical test uv lights that is fluorescence um okay that fresh bone doesn't give any fluorescence appearance in the uv lights when the day or the year passes that is 120 years or more than 90 years when the bone is subjected to uv lights it gives a fluorescence appearance that can be considered as a 
uh, time since death can be estimated that based on the physical test, chemical test, benzaline test of presence of nitrogen and amino acids. Presence of nitrogen uh, will be decreased as the year passes and amino acids uh, that will be usually 14 amino acids will be present in the bone that will be deployed, uh, that will be uh, depleted as the years pass. That is, you can consider like 80 to 90 years or 80 to 100 years, amino acids will be reduced in the bone. That gives an uh, time since death by uh, analysis of all this. Then ossification based on the ossification of a bones, which gives an uh, complete identification and also identification of an age can be determined by the ossification of bones. The first bone is to ossify is clavicle at the fifth to sixth post ovulatory week, and ossification is a process of converting the soft tissue to hard osseous tissue by the osteogenesis. This is called ossification of the bone. That earlier center of the ossification appear at the end of the second month of the pregnancy. Second month of the pregnancy only, the uh, centers of ossification will appear. That is second month of the pregnancy. And the 11th month of intrauterine week, there will be an one not eight centers for the bone growth. And at the both 450 and at adult 206 bones will be present. It has been developed from the uh, bone centers. Okay, Ossification begins centrally in an epiphysis and then spreads to peripherally. In epiphysis, it will start uh, ossification, then it will spread peripheral part of a bone. Okay, in ossification centers, uh, purple bones, that is scaphoid, lunatic, trachyterum, uh, physiform, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hematite, based on the uh, years of ossification has been given here. Uh, just remember the bones in their order. Okay, the first layer, first and second uh, layers that remember, based on that, you can write the months easily. Capitate will be a first, like two to three months, and then one year with a hematite, and there's no two years, three years with the trichotrum, and fourth year, but the lunate, scaphoid and trapezium will be five years, and trapezium will be six years, and pisiform will be 11 years. Based on this, we can, um, based on this, we can give an estimation of an age by the ossification centers. And then, uh, in between the two to six years, uh, when we take an X-ray of the wrist joint, the number of bones present will give an approximate age in years. The X-ray of wrist joint between the two to six years will give an idea of an uh, approximate age. And then age of appearance of ossification in the union, uh, the sternum to the tarsal bones, that is sternum, scapula, humerus, radius, ulnar, hip bone, femur, tibia, fibula, and process. This here mentioned a total or uh, in complete ossification or each part of each bone has a different ossification center. Here just I have mentioned and considered a whole ossification, complete ossification duration. Okay, based on that, we can estimate the age of a person. Okay, based on sutures, closures, and age determination can be done. That is posterior fontanelle, uh, anterior fontanelle, mandible, metopic suture, uh, basal occipital, and basal spinoid, lamboid suture, and paratemporal uh, suturing closures will also give an idea of age of a person. Next, scar. Uh, a scar is a fibrous uh, tissue produced as a result of healing of wound, and it is covered by an epithelium devoid of a hair follicle, sweat glands, and or pigmentation. It is a permanent, and it is um form the damage of a dermis okay this gives a shape of an wound also or it assumes a shape of an wound also and medical legal importance of scar important for an identification and type of weapon used for uh, causing injury can be uh give an idea about the weapons and the age of a scar uh by that age, duration can be notified by how long ago, how long, how many days ago it has been done. By that, we can identify type of an injury. For example, lacerated wound will give uh, become a scar like um, without any particular um, shape. Okay, and then in the incised, the incised shape will be an uh, uh, scar will be formed. Based on that, type of injury can be done. Based on the injury type, the weapon can be. Uh, detected which type of weapon has been written scarred due to the grievous injury or the permanent damage we, uh, has been considered as an offense under the section 320 IPC which gives that is a permanent deformity of the body because of that it has been considered a problem or offense in the section uh, under the section 320 of IPC. 
then tattoo marks uh, here the dis designs affected by the multiple small punches wounds made through the skin with the needles dipped in the coloring material here the some chemicals has been used uh, where the needle is deep in that and it is be punctured multiple punctures will be uh, on the skin it causes an infectious uh, diseases like septic septic inflammation abscess infectious diseases like aids uh, hpsag etc and also it help and also it will be a reason to form a scar and kill out also artificial removal of a method of this tattoo marks like surgical method electrolysis and laser beams or uh, criminals use this for conceal them or hide them to remove all of those tattoo for their identification marks okay. uh, other features has been not mentioned because uh, medical legal importance and what is that is important well writing if they ask for three marks along with that if you add a bit of the features of that how tattoo marks will be there what the different types of tattoo marks and what it will give and um, how it will helpful in the identification if you write a few of the features of that it will be helpful for scoring the good marks and medical legal importance the identification of a person can be done religion can be known and country to which he is belong to can i be known and god of worship social status mentality and language of a person can be identified by the tattoo marks and trichology it is a study of hair examination hair should be done whether it is a hair or the fiber based on their uh, root and shaft that is hair will be having a three parts cuticle cortex and matter based on that examination we can identify it is a human hair or a fiber if it is a hair then man a human or animal hair based on the color changes along with their shaft that is called a banding uh, based on that banding we can identify it is a human or animal uh, hair part of the body that is um, by studying of that head um, or uh if it is a head part that is a scalp hair it will be a long soft and tapered it, comparatively for other body parts here when the scalp hair will be long soft and tapered that same features won't be there in other parts of the hair of the other parts of the body and the sex determination and age determination by the di diameter of that hair and based on the dyeing or coloring or bleaching uh, or the diseases can be identification can be done and compared to the victim and the suspected can be done and naturally or forcefully which is plugged which is forcefully plugged or naturally it is fall we can give an idea of the scene of crime can be estimated and cause of injury how the injury has been caused can be identified by the study of hair that is trichology medical importance hair is an important scene of crime uh, as, uh, is a important the crime investigation it is one of the um, evidence which can be given and um, which can turn the case to any ways or which can give uh, absolute evidence for in that case in any of the films like uh, cold case which is being done by prithviraj uh, chauhan where the hair was the one of the major uh, identification uh, major evidence which turned the case and easily the person has been uh, arrested or a person has been identified this is here here has been one of the important evidence like that here is and also an uh, important in the crime investigation nature of the weapon can be known by the uh, cut off in hair or damage to the hair uh, identification of a weapon can be done uh, peculiarity of the hair where coloring of hair or a split hair based on that we can uh, identify sex determination uh, can be done bone injury if a bone injury is done then uh, hair will be char smell like or the appearance also will be like uh, in that we can identify chronic poisoning a uh, deposition of that poison will be there in that hair by that identification can be done time sometimes we can estimate weapon hair of uh, different race and uh, weapon used and dowry death the next topic and dowry death uh, according to the uh, dowry prohibition act 1961 dowry is a property or valuable security given to or agreed to be given either directly or indirectly by one party of a marriage to another party of a marriage it is uh, anything or the any valuable things which is given to a one family to another person at the time of a marriage which may be directly or indirectly both taking and giving is both uh, Offense. Okay. Uh, according to same act under section three of that act, provide for the penalty for giving and taking dowry. Uh, uh, according uh, in the same act that is uh, 1961, the Dowry Provision Act, section four, penalty for demanding dowry is also.
that uh, uh, it is it is done or harassment is done because of an dowry or because of any money properties or anything else if has been death also such death has been considered as a dowry death and in that conditions husband and relative shall be deemed to be and have a cause for her death within seven years of her marriage if any injury or any bone other than uh, normal circumstances has been done or death has been done based on the other evidences if it has been showed that harassment has been done then it has been considered as dowry death and both husband and family will be caused for the, the for the death and imprisonment will be not uh, less than seven years along with the fine will be uh, declared then under the section 498a deals with the cruelty or uh, the cruelty with the mental or physically uh, has been considered and here three years imprisonment and with the fine has been um, declared and then section 113a uh, and 113b uh, deals with the uh, presumption as to be abetment of a suicide by a married woman and it is because of a dowry that means um, who trigger for a person to commit a suicide because of these reasons, because of humiliating or harassment or uh, troubling her because of a dowry. By the paying, if she committed suicide, that is also considered an offense. And then where under the section 174, 3 CRPC, if she committed suicide or has been killed by other, another or by any an animal or by machinery or any accident, as died under the circumstances rising a reasonable suspicion that some other person has committed an offense because of any offense which has been done the family husband or the family members if a person she committed a suicide or killed by other person or killed by animals or killed by accidentally which that is like uh, pretending like an accident considered here and that is considered as an offense and over in uh, steroidogenic that means at the time of our menstrual cycle um, Arising or or behaving with her, uh, which terms in uh, suicidal tendencies, and sh if she committed suicide, that is also considered as an offense. Here. And it has been uh, dealt by the magistrate or police officer, and autopsy should be must by the two doctors. Then forensic science laboratory, the next topic, and which is a very important topic for five marks also. And the forensic science uh, laboratory, the study and application of the scientific examination and evaluation of evidences for the legal procedures. What are the evidences which is obtained in the scene of crime as uh, mm, is being sent for the uh, forensic science laboratory where there is a proper examination is done and evaluation of that evidence has been done. Analysis, detail, uh, um, identification, examination, uh, everything has been done in the scientific way with the help of and techniques from our modern equipments and then we will give it a report. Based on that report, there will be a confirmatory um, identification of a victim or the person or the murderer or the crime. Okay. The functions like examine, come. and to collect the evidences by the visiting here the uh, cf fsl will guide the person how to take an evidences in the crime detection or the crime of scene or to collect the screen see uh, evidences by the visiting the scene of crime or proper scientific guidance will be given by the fsl and then use of modern and sophisticated techniques the crime uh, detection and to know the cause of death this was the few functions of a FSL and the setup will be like analytical. Analytical, like uh, uh, how the structure will be there in the FSL. FSL analytical is one where you use HPTLC, TLC, HPLC, gas chromatography, liquid chromatography. Uh, based on these techniques, identification or examination is done. That is called analytical and biological. That is a blood examination, urine examination, and that will be considered as biological. And physics, that examination of the soil or the sand. Uh, there are the few examples for the physics uh, or uh, 
setup of that chemistry the chemical estimation of chemicals or identification of the chemicals or detection of the chemicals and which chemical is present in that content or any evidences like vomiting uh, stools urine etc the identification of chemicals is related to chemistry department ballistics ballistics is like uh, study of the firearms bullets guns or um, uh clause which is done uh, which got an evidence in the scene of uh, crime which has been in the firearm injuries okay and then fingerprinting will be a separate uh, division and documentation documentation study is like uh forgery or overwriting or uh, changing the sentences based on the uh, handwriting etc the documentation uh, has been uh, examine properly thoroughly and then photography in uh, superimposition where the photography will be mixed and uh, one face above another face can be superimposed in that condition also and the false photographies can be identified alcoholic and narcotic sanction under that uh, alcohol or um, um, percentage of alcohol is be estimated and then narcotic the any ban uh, ganja charas etc has been uh, identified and there uh, quantity of present will be given cyber crime uh, nowadays the hacking of uh, uh, social media like instagram or uh, facebook or whatsapp uh, that kind of things uh, uh, unwanted mails can be compared to the cyber uh, forensic department and that will be investigated under the cyber department acoustics acoustics will helpful in the voice detection and brain mapping if a person is lying then um, uh the variations which is seen in the brain uh that based on that studies of the variation of that studies will give uh, called as brain mapping based on that identity uh, based on that the evidence can be um or the what is going on in the person's mind can be identified based on that we can detect the detect and polygraphy polygraphy is a lie detector machine uh if a person is lying the variations in his vitals is recorded and that will give uh, gives an idea that person has been lying and dna profiling has uh, previously i have explained and then here is how the staffs will be or the setup like uh, if a director will be a main under him the scientific division and administration division under the administration division the account section purchase or establishment etc will be there in the under scientific divisions biological section chemical section documentary etc which has been seen in the previous slide that divisions will be there and the scientific divisions and then uh, staffs like uh, technical wing will be there and one more like administrator wing will be there under the technical wing there will be a director deputy director joint director assistant director and senior scientific officers will be there and then in administrator wing section officer assistant officer storekeeper librarian museum in charge or supporting staff like driver p1 etc will be there and each and every forensic science laboratory should have the museum which should display all types of evidences okay that with a detailed explanation like uh, at least basic should be there naming or uh, when is collected etc should be mentioned in that and the structure how it is built means the collection of the samples in the scene of crime till the last evident part until that forensic science laboratory will helpful in detecting identification examination and proper evidence by giving that forensic science laboratory is helpful uh by this i conclude uh this presentation or the webinar of uh, guest lecture series for uh, examination purpose there is identification data most of that will be helpful in the five marks or three marks questions uh, they may ask forensic odontology which has been repeated in the previous year and uh, trichology last two years has been repeated question and race and religion for five marks they may ask and uh, forensic osteology big plus and then dactylography is, is important and fingerprint is important uh, for all this when you are writing you have proper uh, um point wise uh, should be written not like a paragraph and specific should be it should be a very specific for the question and then for all you have to write with a diagram then only it will give an uh, presentation and correct evaluators will get an idea that you have read the things by that you will can score more and thank you and all the best for the exams
हेलो सर मैं ऑडिबल चाह हेलो सर मैं ऑडिबल चाह Yeah, you're so from the team of uh, Panchajanya, we are very glad to have you, sir, and uh, thank you for hosting this session. If there's any uh, doubts regarding the session and the topics uh, related to the session, we will be forwarding it to you, and uh, your answers will be reverted back to the. Specific people, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, sure, I'll definitely answer that any doubts is there, and then I like to thank the team for giving an opportunity. Uh, I hope I have been conveyed the topics very well, and uh, yes, sir, yes, with, sir. Uh, more duration as the topic is very big uh, because yes, of sir, that. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you once again for the team. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. Okay.